Okay, so what is a radian? Okay, if you've never heard of this word before, I'm glad that you're dropping by because this is not going to be that difficult, but we want to know uh, how many radians are in 80 degrees. So what are we talking about here? Well, we are talking about measurements of angles. That's a little bit of a clue. And if you've never heard of a radian uh, before, well, uh, this word or this concept is really kind of introduced at the trigonometry level in terms of mathematics. Now, uh, trigonometry used to kind of be back in the good old days, and I'm talking uh, several decades ago, used to be kind of a semester course. Now, some schools uh, still offer trigonometry as like a semester course. Now, if you've taken high school level geometry, you are introduced to some basic trigonometry, but uh, most, it's problem these days, it's much more common to see trigonometry as part of a pre-calculus course. So if you have not taken pre-calculus, which means you probably haven't had the trigonometry, which represents about a good third or half of a pre-calculus course, then you may not have seen this word radian. But uh, don't feel like you have to have, you know, be at this advanced level of math to understand this. This is not that difficult, but um, if you do have any attention of taking trigonometry, well, then you're going to want to stick around. This is just going to be a quick introduction to what a radian is, and this is very, very important stuff when it comes to mathematics, especially trigonometry. But uh, anyways, if you think you know the answer to this question, how many radians is 80 degrees, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the answer here in just a minute or two, but uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. It is my true calling, my true passion, and I can tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math, okay? If you failed a, a math class before, if you're struggling right now, that doesn't have to determine your future, okay? The past doesn't equal the future, right? And currently, if you're struggling in math, what you have to do is figure out how to turn things around because you can. What you need is a desire to uh, learn math, right? If you want to learn math, then that's the starting point. If you don't want to learn math, you're going to have a tough time learning mathematics, obviously. But the second thing you need is encouragement, right? You know, hopefully you got a great teacher that's encouraging you or some sort of mentor that's kind of lifting you up. But the most important thing you need is understandable, clear math instruction, right? So when you're learning math, do you actually learn or understand what you're being taught, okay? So clear, understandable, and comprehensive math instruction is what you really need to be successful in mathematics. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, anything with a mathematics portion on it, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span all these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, math notes in the description as well because I find it's pretty common that uh, students don't take that uh, good of notes, okay? So uh, that's probably poor grammar. But anyways, listen, you have to take excellent math notes to be successful in math. I know myself way back in the good old days when I was in high school, I didn't, I barely took notes at all. And when I did take them, uh, they were pretty sloppy and, and uh, you know, uh, unorganized, etc. So try to become more uh, organized, try to be neater, try to take better math notes and things will get much, much better for you. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm gonna give you the answer to this here in just one second, but let's go ahead and, and talk about first, what is a radian? All right, this is not that difficult. So let's focus our attention over here to this side of the video right here. So here is a circle, okay? And when we talk about degrees, right, angle measurements like this right here could be like 45 degrees. We can think of this in terms of a circle, right? So a circle, we start at zero degrees and then we kind of go counterclockwise. So this many degrees right here, this would be 90 degrees. So a semicircle would be what? That's half the circle, 180 degrees. If we go three quarters of the circle, that's 270 degrees. And if we make a complete lap around uh, a circle, we have 360 degrees. So we measure angles, probably the most common way, 
by this unit of measure called degrees, right? So for example, if I have like a perfect L right here and I have this little box in the corner, this is indicating 90 degrees, right? So something like this again would be like 45 degrees and then I can have something like an obtuse angle right here. This might be like 120 degrees. So again, degrees is how we measure angles, right? It's probably the most common way or common unit of measure, but it's not the only unit of measure that we can use to measure angles. There is another one, and this other one is actually uh, almost more common uh, in more advanced mathematics, and that unit of measure is called radians. Okay, so radians is another way we can measure an angle. Okay, so let's just go ahead and quickly define what a radian is. And actually, there's kind of a um, more of a detailed approach I can uh, get into to express or define uh, what a radian is exactly, but we're going to make this video nice and easy, nice and short. Basically, here's the deal. Uh, a radian, all right, a circle, which would be 360 degrees, is 2 pi radians, right? So 2 pi is equal to 360 degrees. So one lap around a circle is 2 pi radians. And just notice right here, we have this pi, okay, involved uh, with our uh, unit of measure for radians, okay? So when we're talking about radians, you always have a, well, not always, but almost always, you'll have that pi symbol in there. Now you think about it, uh, pi, all right, is used everywhere when we're talking about circles. And let's just quickly make sure you understand uh, what pi is, okay? And I'll kind of come back here and finish up. But what is pi, okay? Well, pi has to do with circles, right? Well, pi, hopefully you know this, it's uh, basically here, the width of a circle is called what? The diameter. The distance around the circle is called the what? Circumference, okay? Now, if you take any circle, right? That doesn't care, I don't care if it's a small circle, big circle, doesn't make a difference. If you take the circumference of that circle and divide it by the diameter, you'll keep getting this same number. 3.14, da, 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 that's what we call it. That particular number, that's a what we call a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. It's what we call an irrational number. That number goes on infinitely speaking. We can't even define that number, so we just give it a fancy little variable, okay, something like this, a symbol to represent that number, and that's what pi is, okay? Pi is, again, the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of any circle. And of course, every single circle, when you measure the circumference by its diameter, you're gonna get the same number, which is pi. So when we're talking about circles, right, pi is pretty important, okay? And that's why radians are such an effective way to measure angles, okay? So let's go ahead and just quickly look at some common units of measure. So 360 degrees is two pi radians. If you go 90 degrees, that's equal to what? Well, actually, just hold on for that for a second. If we take and we go halfway around a circle, which would be equivalent to 180 degrees, well, that would just be half of our 2 pi, which is pi, okay? Now, just like over here, we got 0 to 180. If I split the 180, I'm going to be half of this semicircle, which is a quarter of the circle, which would be 90 degrees, but 90 degrees is equal to pi. If I take that and divide that by 2, that's pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, and 3 pi over 2 is 270 degrees. So when you study tri uh, trigonometry at a little more advanced level, these are going to be very common units of measure for angles. Okay. All right, so that's what a radian is. It's just another way to measure an angle. And uh, notice here, there is no like uh, like 90 degrees. I have a little symbol like that. You don't need to do um, put anything there in terms of radian. There is no little symbol uh, like that. Sometimes you see the, uh, the word rads, R-A-D-S. And one other thing about uh, degrees and radians, uh, before we actually get into how to um, convert degrees to radians is on your calculator, okay, when you do take trigonometry, in the mode, you have a um, button called mode on your calculator, and I'm talking about scientific and graphing calculators, and you could put your calculator in uh, DEG or degree modes, which means that you'll be working with degrees, or you could put it into RAD, 
which is radians, okay? Now, here's the deal. If you are taking trigonometry, you're going to be working uh, pretty frequently with radians, and uh, you'll switch your calculator over to radian um, uh, mode, and you'll be doing all your work and whatnot, getting all your problems right, so you're like watching my videos, etc. That's a little joke, but anyways, you kind of get the idea. You'll be happy. You're like, okay, good to go. Now, you'll take on another problem, and that problem involves degrees. Guess, what's, guess what happens? This happens all the time. Students forget to switch their calculator back into degree mode. Okay, especially you see this on quizzes and tests, and it just frustrates me as a math teacher. I'm like, look, listen, listen, you have, you're doing everything perfectly, but your calculator was in the wrong mode. So if you are learning this, if you're like, oh yeah, I'm taking trigonometry right now, listen, be on high alert when it comes to your calculator. Make sure you're in the correct mode because you're going to be switching back and forth between degrees and radians. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer this question now. How many degrees? is how many radians is 80 degrees? Well, uh, first thing we want to do is just understand what is the conversion factor? How do we go from radians to degrees? Now, when you get into uh, trigonometry, you can go from uh, degrees to radians. Actually, that's what we're doing here, okay? So radians to degrees, that's not what we're doing. Uh, so I'm gonna fix this up. Uh, but you can go, you can convert uh, one way or another. So this is actually incorrect. So let's fix this up on the fly. We're going to go to degrees to radians. So you can go back and forth. And basically, uh, it's just another different uh, conversion factor. But this is what we really want to do. See that here? Even me, I've been doing math for decades. You know, I make mistakes all the time. But what's what's the, uh, the thing about uh, mathematics or anything you do? You might make an error, right? If you're working your stuff out, your problem, you're like, oh, I made a mistake right there. That's normal. It's, we're, you know, we're only human beings. We don't do things perfectly every single time the first time. But what you want to be doing is double checking as you go. You want to become an auditor. So even now when I'm looking at my work, I'm like, oh, that's wrong. Let me fix it. Okay. As long as you fix it before you turn this in to your teacher, um, of course, I don't have a teacher. My teacher is you, my uh, <laughs> the people I love to help. So you guys are my teachers. So as long as I fix this before I finish this video, I think I'll be okay. But anyways, let's get back to how to go from degrees to radians. So um, what we need to do is multiply by the conversion factor, all right? So that conversion factor is pi over 180, okay? So here we're going to take, uh, for example... 360 degrees. We know that 360 degrees is equal to what? 2 pi radians. So let's just test this uh, conversion factor real quick. So if we take 360 and we multiply by pi over 180, what are we going to get? Well, hopefully you remember how to multiply fractions. 360 over 1, we're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators, is going to give us 360 pi over 1 times 180. So 360 over 180, well, 360 divided by 180 is what? 2, right? So this is going to end up being 2 pi. So this conversion factor works. Okay, so that's how we go from degrees to radians. And again, this is just a quick um, introduction to this. Uh, you'll need to know how to go from radians to 2 degrees. Not that difficult. But let's go ahead and uh, convert uh, 80 degrees into radians, all right? All right, so we're going to take our degrees, or 80 degrees, and multiply it by pi over 180, all right? So it's going to be 80 over 1, and so that's going to be 80 times pi, which is 80 pi, and 1 times 180, that's going to be, of course, 180. So 80 over 180, I can easily cross-cancel those zeros, so that's going to leave me with this fraction, 8 pi over 18, and 2 goes in 8, 4, and 2 goes in 18, 9. So this is going to be 4 pi over 9, and there you go, all right? So 80 degrees is 4 pi over 9 radians. So again, okay, we can go from radians to degrees, and that's what I had there. But I don't want to make this video too much more longer because, you know, just, just a quick introduction to what a radian is. But I can tell you right now, if you have any intention of learning more, you know, like advanced trigonometry, well, when you start learning trigonometry, okay, trigonometry is a study of angles and whatnot. Uh, and it's, you kind of were first introduced to some uh, some pretty decent level of trigonometry concepts in high school level geometry. And I'm talking about things like the sine, the cosine, the tangent. This is what we call trigonometric functions. Okay, so that is a really important 
uh, kind of you know baseline uh, foundational knowledge of trigonometry. But what I'm talking about trigonometry where you start using radians is a little bit more advanced stuff. So sometimes it's in like an algebra two course, but uh, definitely a full on trigonometry course is going to be almost always a part of like a class like pre uh, calculus. Okay. All right. So if you're interested in learning more about trigonometry, if you want to actually check out my pre-calculus course, you can find it at my math help program. I do have additional videos on trigonometry in my, on my uh, YouTube channel as well. But hopefully this video was interesting and helped you out to the slightest degree. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.